Hello, this is Pastor Rob Elka from Evangel Pentecostal Tabernacle in Dresden. We're glad that you have tuned in again today. We have a great message that's going to encourage you today, I believe, and so just stay tuned for that. Uh, before that happens, we're going to start out by singing great things. Pat and Rebecca are going to lead us today. And just know that God has done great things, is doing great things, and is going to do great things. So sing it with all your heart with great faith believing today. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. I can 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. You're worthy of all praise. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you, Jesus, that you saved us. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross. You're worthy of all praise. We open our hearts this morning to praise you and to worship you for who you are, the greatness of your name, the greatness and wonder of what you did for us, the greatness and wonder of who you are, creator eternal forever and ever. Yet you care about us, God. Praise you, Jesus. We join with all creation in praising our God. So that's our testimony. So will I. We will praise Him. We will glorify Him. The message I have for you today is entitled, The Wounded Wrestler. And it's taken from Genesis chapter 32. And so I want to start out today by giving you a little bit of background to our scripture text before I read it. Jacob was about to come face to face with his twin brother Esau. It had been some 20 years since they had seen each other. They had not parted on the best of terms. As a matter of fact, Esau plotted to kill his brother as soon as their father Isaac passed away. The reason Esau despised his brother was due to the fact that Jacob had deceived his nearly blind father into giving him the family blessing that belonged to Esau as the firstborn. An Old Testament blessing of a father to his sons included words of encouragement, details regarding each son's inheritance, and prophetic words concerning the future. Jacob had no idea if Esau still carried a grudge after all these years, and he feared for his life and those of his family and his servants. So Jacob learned that Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men. So figuring this could well mean his demise, the Bible says he divided his household along with the flocks and herds and camels into two groups. And so his logic was if Esau and his men wiped out one group, uh, then the other could still escape. Jacob also decided to send a, a little bribe ahead to potentially soften his brother up. It included 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female goats, and 10 male goats. The dude was sending a flipping zoo. And so these, these gifts would come in three installments. Each was separated by a few miles and a few hours. Finally, Jacob was to meet up with Esau the following day. And so scripture tells us, Jacob thought, I will try to appease him by sending gifts ahead of me. When I see him in person, perhaps he will be friendly to me. So the gifts were sent on ahead while Jacob himself spent that night in the camp. And so let's pick up the story in Genesis 32 and starting at verse 22. It says, during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servant wives, and his 11 sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the break of dawn. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him, 
From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name, the man replied. And then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. One of the most flawed men in the Bible was Jacob. His name literally meant he grabs the heel. It refers to the circumstances of his birth as he was grabbing the heel of his brother Esau as they exited the womb. Figuratively, his name meant he deceives. Jacob lived up to his name. He, he grabbed his brother's birthright and blessing before he left home. In this encounter, we see Jacob grab onto God and refuse to let go. But the best part of Jacob or Israel's story is that God had grabbed a hold of him and wouldn't let go. It reminds me of these words in the verses of John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For my Father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So be encouraged today. If you are a child of God, he has a hold of you and he will not let go. In this strange story, we find Jacob alone in a desert where he ends up wrestling with some shadowy figure all night long until daybreak. The scripture makes it clear that Jacob is left with nothing. His wives, servant, children, they're all gone. Everything he owned followed along with them. He was alone in his fears when this divine wrestling match took place. Sometimes God has to bring us to a place of nothingness before we can encounter him in a new and life-altering way. I find it somewhat amusing how this encounter is recorded. Jacob is alone in his tent, and some man randomly shows up and starts fighting with him. Put yourself in that situation. You're sitting at home in solitude on your couch. The doorbell rings. You answer. You're greeted by a visitor who says, Are you ready to rumble? And he tackles you to the ground. This fight lasted through the night. Uh, when I was young and in much better shape, I was a wrestler. I loved the sport, I, I trained hard, and, and I achieved a fair bit of success. Back in the day when I grappled, we would have two three-minute rounds. When you had a tough competitor, by the time those two rounds were done, you were spent. These men wrestled to exhaustion until the break of dawn. Somewhere along the line, Jacob realizes this is no ordinary man he was wrestling with. This was a divine encounter. And so in Jacob's desperation, he, he refused to let this moment pass him by. His opponent even knocked his hip out of the socket, but Jacob still wouldn't tap out. This injury had the effect of making Jacob even more vulnerable to Esau, forcing Jacob's faith to more fully rest on God and not himself. If necessary, God will cause us to limp to increase our faith. Jacob was holding out for the blessing of God. He had to know that God was still with him. He needed the assurance that, that God's promises to his grandfather Abraham and his own father Isaac, that they were still on the table. He had to know that God's promise and plan for his own life would not end at the hands of his brother Esau, and God granted his request. And so after this marathon struggle with God, Jacob was renamed Israel, meaning he who wrestles with God. Wrestling with God changed Jacob's identity. He was no longer to be known as the one who received his blessing by deception. 
This time he received God's blessing by, by grabbing onto God for all he was worth. Oh, the audacity of Jacob to wrestle with God, to, to resist God, to, to get in God's face and say defiantly, I will not let you go unless you bless me. After such bold behavior, God didn't finish off Jacob as we might expect. In fact, he rewarded his feisty persistence by giving him a new name, a new identity, as one who has wrestled with God and prevailed. Take note of what God did when he wrestled Jacob. Jacob began the night dreading Esau's arrival. He was full of fear and desperation. But he ended the night of struggle with God's blessing and a renewed faith. All of our struggling with God in faith leads to peace. Jacob, or shall we say Israel, then limped toward his tense reunion with Esau with a weakened body but a strengthened faith. Having wrestled with God, he knew his prayers regarding Esau would be answered. Isn't it interesting that, that God did not simply speak to Jacob in a dream or a vision as he had other times and, and just reiterate his promise and speak comforting words? This time God addressed Jacob's fear by requiring him to wrestle all night. This probably felt to Jacob like a badly timed hassle when he just wanted comfort and assurance. But later, he realized just how comforting it was. Sometimes when we want God's comfort, he sends it in unexpected and even unwanted packages. What is the sign that one has been touched and blessed by an encounter with the living God? Is it that they get a big house, much wealth, an easy, carefree life? Nope. The telltale sign that someone has brushed up against God's awesome presence is often this. They walk with a spiritual limp. They have scars from all night shouting matches with God. They, they have arm wrestled God in the silence of God's apparent absence. They have grabbed onto God and refused to let go, even when God's presence sometimes seems to bring more pain than it does comfort. They know that contrary to popular belief, Jesus was right when he said, Blessed are those who mourn. These are the ones who will be comforted. Dare we say the opposite is also true. Sad are those who refuse to mourn and deal with the inner pain, for they keep God's comfort at arm's length. I'm afraid many of us mistakenly think God wants timid, polite followers who aim to please and appease him. People who walk on eggshells around him trying to keep our voices down, act properly, and keep our fears, doubts, and disappointments and frustrations to ourselves. We think that, that wrestling with God is a sign of spiritual weakness and immaturity. Yet, I think God wants feisty followers who aren't afraid to wrestle with Him and wrestle out loud with our faith and our doubts. This is the kind of faith we see displayed in the Psalms as David makes his praises and frustrations known to God. Here's an example from Psalm 22. He says, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call out to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Wow, that's a prayer of someone that is wrestling with God. I'm afraid we often prefer quaint, polite faith that, that keeps the wild and unpredictable God at a distance. We put him in a box. We, we, we put on a lid and we keep him on a shelf at our disposal. I am worried we're living in a day of sanitized and safe Christianity in North America. And we're missing out on the true adventure of faith, stretching obedience that calls us out into the night to wrestle our doubts and fears down to the ground to encounter God under the stars. The Bible invites us to embrace a comfort-crushing brand of faith that leaves us winded and wounded as we are broadsided by the radical and counter-cultural teachings of Jesus and his kingdom. Sadly, many of us have come to believe a, a false gospel that doesn't come with any suffering or pain. We can't promise people they can have Jesus in the comforts, prosperities, and possessions they desire. 
We can't place our hopes for the future in both God and the government. The kingdom belongs to all of us ragamuffins who find themselves constantly, actively wrestling with their faith, wrestling with God and wrestling with what it means to be a follower of the self-sacrificing Savior in a self-indulgent culture. May we strive to be God wrestlers and pain embracers in a culture of God appeasers and pain avoiders. I invite you onto the mat to wrestle with God with openness, honesty, and courageous vulnerability. Only those who are willing to wrestle in the shadows in the night will truly grow in God and find true spiritual freedom on the other side of the Jabbok River. No pain, no gain is just as true in spiritual training as it is in physical training. I want to be a Christian who walks with a limp. I want the church to be a community of people who would rather be uncomfortable in the awesome presence of God than comfortable in our own self-made world where Jesus' meddling presence is kept safely at a distance. One of the greatest lessons Christianity teaches is that there is no shame in being broken and needy. True courage and strength are not self-made independence and self-sufficiency, but a willingness to admit our need for God's help and live in childlike dependence on Him. Just like parenting, after we teach our children how to walk upright, An even more important lesson is teaching them how to fall gracefully into God in order to be picked up again, now perhaps with their own holy limp. When God makes us wrestle Him for some blessing or blessings, it is not because God is reluctant to bless us, even if that's how it first feels. It is because He has more blessings for us in the wrestling than without it. Remember, God pursued Jacob for this match. God was the initiator. Jacob was stewing in his own anxiety over Esau and his approaching slaughter squad when God showed up. The wrestling drew Jacob out of his fearful preoccupation and forced him to focus on God. I doubted that Jacob wanted this forced focus or even believed that he needed it at first. It wouldn't surprise me if at the beginning Jacob had prayed, God, would you get rid of this guy? This is the last thing I need right now. But what he discovered was that wrestling was the means of God's grace, a channel of God's blessing. And the same is true for each of us. What do you really need from God right now? What blessing do you want from him? How badly do you want it? There are times when God only releases His blessings on us after a season of prolonged and even painful wrestling with Him. Let us follow Jacob's example. Grab onto God. Don't let go. And let those all-night battles with God be an indicator that our faith is alive and that God is with us in the darkest desert. Let God give us each a new name and identity. You are Christian one who wrestles with God. God will meet you in your anguish, fear, and uncertainty. But He may not meet you in the way that you expect or desire. Your greatest ally may show up looking at first like your adversary, inciting you to wrestle with Him. If so, remember Jacob. There are multiple blessings in wrestling. You may not need soft words or comfort. You may not need to be left alone with your thoughts. You may not need sleep. You may not need a healthy hip. But you need God's blessing. So when God calls you to wrestle Him, it is an invitation to receive His blessing. Stay with Him and don't give up. He loves to bless that kind of tenacious faith and you will come out transformed. Do not let Him go until... He blesses you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are challenged by this encounter that Jacob, that Israel had with you. Maybe the darkest time of his life, he had to fight. He had to wrestle. 
Lord, in the end, he received your blessing because he refused to let go. Lord, for those today that are in some kind of challenge, they are wrestling it through in their own hearts and lives. And Lord, they're thinking this is hard and it's a bad thing, but Lord, it might be the very thing that they need to be doing. Wrestling, not just with the challenge, but wrestling with you. God, where are you? God, I can't see you in this. God, how are you going to come through? Lord, may they continue to do that. Lord, may they do it in faith, holding on to you, believing that somehow, some way, you're going to come through even when they can't see it. Lord, may there be a blessing. May there be blessings for them. May they receive a new name and a new identity, one who wrestles with God and prevails. Heavenly Father, should there be those listening today who would just say, I'm not sure about any of this. I'm not sure that I'm held in the palm of God's hand. Can't, don't know if I can say I'm his child because I've never asked for forgiveness of my sins. I've never really turned my life over to him. I pray that right now they would surrender to you. They would come and ask forgiveness for every way that they have offended you and turned from you. Lord, in so doing, Lord, you would pour new life into them. They would be born again. Lord, they would become your children. Lord, you would hold them in the palm of your hand and never let go. I pray that lives are changed today in your presence. Lord, just take this message, place it deep in our hearts. Lord, may we hold on to it. If we're wrestling right now, or Lord, it's for a time in the future when we will be. Lord, when we need it most, may you just, the Holy Spirit, return it to our hearts and our minds. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just go to this song and just worship together.
no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming up to me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming up to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming up to me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming up to me. Till you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves a 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Aren't you glad for the love of God, the reckless love of God? I love the words of that song where it says, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. It's, it's kind of that aggressive love. God is coming, help is on the way. He's gonna fight through to get to you. And so although we may have to wrestle and grab onto God, know that God is the initiator in all this. He wants to bless us. He's coming after us because he loves us so much. Thank you for tuning in again this week. We appreciate your faithfulness and your support. And so if there's anything we can do to help you out, send us a prayer request uh, to my email address. We also appreciate you just um, liking and subscribing to our videos. So until we see you again, God bless you and be surrounded by God's wonderful love.